three-seeded Texas Tech in Friday's first game at 12.30. And the men's basketball contact is Brian McEldowney. Uh, we're open for questions. Mic holders are left and right, right here in front, please. Thank you. Question for John Frey from the Cincinnati Enquirer. Question for Drew. Back, you know, four years ago, did you imagine that you guys could get where you are making the NCAA two of three years as you entered Division One? This experience has been incredible. Just the progress we've made. When I came here a couple years ago uh, with Coach Brandon, I just knew it was going to be a process and it was going to be it was going to be a journey, and um, I didn't know what to expect. Coming here, I knew. We had to help build a foundation. I mean, we had some from the Division II area that was built, but we were very new to Division I, and we didn't know what to expect. So we came and we brought in the coach's plan, and um, I knew I wanted to help be part of that foundation. I didn't know if success was going to come as early as it did. But the fact that we've gone to two NCAA tournaments in three years and an IT bid, and our first three years eligible, I don't think any other team has ever done that. It's been something amazing. Coach Brandon was the right choice. Uh, that, is is that the key? Is he, did he have a vision to build what he's built? Absolutely. Questions for who? For Drew. Drew, thank you. Uh, absolutely. He called me the first night he got the job um, and just talked about his vision that he had and why he was taking this job. I mean, yeah, it was a hometown school and where he's from, but he saw a lot more for this university like I did. And we had that vision, and he had that vision specifically, and he came in and built that culture. and really demanded it out of us and demanded it out of the players that were there and the players that he recruited to come there. And uh, it was his vision that we worked for every day, and that's really why we've gotten to where we are today. Jim Kelch, Learfield, NKU. Tyler, you went to Louisville your first year as a walk-on. When you transferred to NKU, take us through that transition, like how that went for you and what, what helped you make that decision to leave a program where you were from, basically Louisville, to come up to NKU? Uh, basically, I just wanted to uh, find an opportunity to where I could compete every day um, and contribute to the success of the program. And I had a couple uh, pretty go close friends growing up that I played AAU with that were on the team at the time. And one of them called me and was like, um, you should come up here Like after I decided I was transferring. And so I came up to NKU on a visit, um, met with the coaches, did a workout. And Coach Brandon, honestly, I mean, he didn't, sugarcoat anything. He told me it was going to be tough. It was going to be a grind and it might not be what I was looking for. Um, but what I what I did see is just the work ethic the guys had, the success they had the previous year. And Coach Brandon, I saw a lot of myself in, I guess, and as opposed to his work ethic and his ambition. And I just thought that was a place that I could fit in. And I really just kind of bet on myself and I guess it worked out. David Collier to the ABC in Lubbock, Texas. This for Drew and Jalen. Uh, what has stuck out uh, on this Texas Tech basketball team for both of you guys looking at film the last few days? Jalen, you're first, please. Uh, they have a, definitely a great group of guys. You know, they shoot it really well. They have a lot of athletic guys also. What sticks out the most is obviously they're one of the top teams defensively in the country. And that's just been something we focused on, being able to still run our offense and still getting the pace of the game the way we like it. I know they like to slow the game down some and just staying with that. The coaching staff has definitely put that in front of us and we've definitely put that to work this week during practice. Just piggyback off Jalen said, they're one of the best teams in the country for a reason. Their defense is amazing. They create a lot of turnovers. Offensively, they play really hard. They have, Obviously, they have a top 10 pick in the draft. That kind of starts with him and they got players that play off of them and know their roles very well. They have good spacing and movement on offense, and uh, they shoot the ball. They have a couple shooters that shoot the ball really well. I think mostly they just play really hard, and we're going to have to match that energy and match that intensity. This is for Jalen Tate. Jalen, I know you didn't start your career uh, as a point guard. How has that gone for you, and do you think like a point guard now? I feel like... I am getting there to thinking like a point guard more every possession. Obviously, it's been a difficult transition moving from the two to the one, but coach has been behind me and my teammates as well have just been keeping me confident in that and just trying to keep my head up as far as being confident, as far as just taking care of the ball, getting us in the offense, keeping pace, stuff like that. So it's been definitely a better experience.
now more than during the beginning. Carlos Silva from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal newspaper in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, this is for Drew and uh, Tyler. Just kind of wanted to get your thoughts as to how you feel the team's playing, especially after winning the conference tournament, how, how the confidence is for you all right now. Tyler, you're first, please. Uh, we always say, Coach always tells us that we're going to make sure we're playing our best basketball come this year. It was March 10th to the 12th when our conference tournament was. And honestly, it, it was looking a little vague. We had hit a little bit of a bumpy road uh, in February. Uh, I believe we were like four and four. And so we we just had to stick to it. And we were able to regroup. And in the conference tournament, like we always say, we felt like we were playing our best basketball. And so coming into this tournament, we're looking to continue that. Um, just keep doing what we're doing, working hard every day, and continue to ascend in the right direction. I believe this team's more confident, more connected, and we're playing our best basketball than we ever have right now. And it took some bumps in the road to get there. I mean, but that's every season. That's how college basketball is. I mean, we're going to take bumps in the road. It just happened that all of ours happened in February, it felt like. But I think we've rebounded from that. I think that really was a positive for this team. And I think it's really gotten our sense of urgency higher. And it's brought us together and brought us more connected. I think you could see that for those that have watched in Detroit uh, the last two games we played, March 11th and 12th, especially the championship game. I think that was one of the best games we've played all year. We were just really connected defensively. We were flying around. just We were having fun out there as a team. And I feel like this is what this team's capable of. We've had a great week of practice, and I think we're looking to play even better come Friday. Right here on the edge, thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Gary Nemec of the Tulsa World, for all three, if you don't mind, uh, playing in a basketball uh, mad state like Kentucky, does, does that help bring attention to your program when you've got powers like uh, Louisville and Kentucky within the state borders, or do you feel a sense of being overshadowed by those two at times? Jalen, we're going to start with you and then just come to the right, please. I feel there's a sense of the, a little of both, you know, with there being such a Kentucky mad, you know, when it comes to basketball in the state, it's like it brings out the community to all of, a lot of our games and honestly gives us that support. But there is also a sense with us playing Louisville and Kentucky in the tournament in the last couple of years of just, you know, we're still kind of overshadowed because we didn't perform the way we wanted to in those games per se. But there's still, like I said, a little of both. Uh, yeah, I would have to say it's same thing, honestly. I mean, Kentucky fans in the state are are wild. I mean, you go far west, far east, they're everywhere, and they're showing up to Kentucky games that are all the way across the country. So it's going to be tough for us to build that brand up to that level. And the same goes for Louisville. I mean, they pat, they sell out a 22,000 seat arena pretty much every night. Um, and so our goal mainly is to just continue continue to work hard and get to the success we've gotten, and uh, over time start to build our brand to where we not necessarily exceed those two programs, but just keep building it to where we have our own fan base and it's not Kentucky fans that also cheer for Northern, but we also have just solely Northern Kentucky fans. I believe it goes beyond the state as well. I think the region that we're in, just right across from Cincinnati, you got Cincinnati and Xavier less than 10 minutes away. So really you have five Division One programs within, I mean, an hour and a half of each other. So it's definitely a basketball crazy area. And I think that's helped us in the fact that we've kind of been the Cinderella story. You said the last couple of years, we've kind of come from nowhere. So I think we've kind of been the team that can be a second supporting team or they have your main Kentucky or Xavier and we're the second team. But I think as Tyler said, we're going to work to keep building that brand. And we're growing continuously, just the university is as well in the entire area. We become like Northern Kentucky's team, essentially. I think we're going to continue to build on that. And I'm not saying we're going to overtake Kentucky and Louisville because obviously they're blue buds of college basketball. But I think you see where you look where Wichita State was or Xavier was 10, 20, 30 years ago. I can't see that we're that much different than that. And just the path that we're on, just the whole university, I can see us definitely being a big time program in the near future. We are under five minutes in this session. Next question is right here. Steve Muller, NKU Learfield IMG College. This question is for all three of the young men. Um, how do you guys feel that the last two post seasons have set up where you're at today? Drew, we're gonna start with you and then go that way this time. Experience is never something – it's always something you like to have. I mean, you can't – you can rely on it at times. And I think we have a couple of us, Jalen, Dantez, myself, who have played an NCAA tournament game before. And then most of the team played at Louisville last year in the NIT. And just that experience, that postseason, we get to experience that run, run of emotions 
uh, just playing in a different arena and a neutral site with all the media and the exposure that we get that we're not always used to being a mid-major school, I think that definitely helps. It can't hurt. But I think at the end of the day, coach and the players have done a great job just taking this another game. I mean, we focus as every game's a championship game for us, and we're just going to take that mentality going forward. But the experience piece, it just never hurts. Uh, kind of piggyback off what he said, I think what we do a good job of is our coaching staff um, treats every day like we're preparing for a championship. And so we prepare every day as if we are about to go play in the NCAA tournament so that when, when we get here, um, it's not a shock and awe feeling. I mean, I mean, obviously, like Drew said, we don't have the media exposure every day or every week that you get when you get to a level of this. But I think our preparation every day to play for a championship and compete for championships um, just kind of instills that confidence and um, allows us to come into these moments and not be sh shell shocked. Obviously, like they said, just the two years that we've had prior and leading up to them have kind of prepared us for this year. And it's like, you're going to continue to get better. You're going to continue to improve your preparation. So the experience that we've had before has allowed us to be prepared, as prepared as we are this week going up and obviously getting ready to play well tomorrow. Anything else for the young men from Northern Kentucky? All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Best of luck. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. The head coach of the Norse is with us now, John Brannon. We're going to ask him to make an opening statement about his team, about being here in Tulsa, and then we'll go to questions uh, on, for 15 minutes. John, please. Well, certainly, first of all, what an honor it is to get a chance to, to compete in the NCAA tournament. Uh, very appreciative of Tulsa uh, since we've been here. have been an amazing host. I actually got a, a text this morning from Dari Nokum, one of Tulsa's greats, and uh, welcoming, to, uh, welcoming me and my team to Tulsa. So. 
Uh, it's been really good. Um, excited to get a chance to compete on this stage against a team that's, uh, you know, in my mind, one of the best in the country. Um, certainly, a coach, in, you know, Coach Beard has done an amazing job and, and probably one of the top coaches in the country. It'll be a tremendous challenge for us tomorrow in a lot of different facets, uh, but our guys are excited to get the opportunity to get out here and for the second time in three years on this stage and, and hopefully perform to our best. Start right down here in the first row. Name and affiliation, please. Uh, John Face at Tonight Enquirer. John, it, you know, when you took this job, did you envision that you, you know, two NCAA uh, bursts in three years, went to the NIT last year? Did, did you think that that could happen that quickly? Yeah, I get that question a lot, John. And I, I always say I didn't put a ceiling on this team in this program. You know, the expectations was we would be sitting here one day. I didn't know it would happen this quick. Um, I tell you, I am surprised it hasn't picked up more national exposure in terms of being, I don't know how many mid-major programs have actually been to an NCAA tournament, NIT, NCAA tournament, won two league titles, much less being a program who's only been eligible to do it for those three years. And that's kind of the caveat. So, um, you know, I think it's, uh, it's something that our, our young men deserve a ton of credit for because there's a lot of sustainability on our roster and a lot of guys have gone through it from the first few years. Uh, but once we've started doing it and we've been able to sustain it and continue to build on it, I think that has been the real uh, accomplishment. Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News. John, what stands out about Jarrett Culver from the film you've seen and, and the challenges he presents? And does he remind you of anybody you might have seen in the last couple of years? Yeah, Chuck, I think, you know, anytime it's on film, it's different than when you see him in person. Uh, his length and his speed and his ability to get where he wants to go in a way. You know, an NBA scout always told me one time, you know, the, the great ones always look like they got about 30% more to give. That's what he looks like. He always looks like he can turn it on at any time. And that's, that's a sign of a, an unbelievable talent. The piece that I think that, that people miss on it, unless you're a coach, is the fact that he does it within their system, it defends at a high level, and does all the other little things at a high level, and not just scores like a top 10 draft pick that he is. And I think that's the impressive part. Right back in the back. Thank you. Carlos Silva, Lubbock Avalanche Journal, a newspaper in Lubbock, Texas. Coach, uh, just in terms of what you all were able to do, obviously getting on this run, winning the conference tournament, uh, how much did the adversity through the season help you get there, and what, what's the team's confidence like going into the tournament? I think it's a great question. You know, last year we went 15-3, and three and there wasn't a whole lot of adversity during the course of the regular season. This year we also won the regular season title at 13-5. and five. But There was more adversity. We were 4-4, four and, four and I think we were 4-4, four 3-4 and four, three and four at one time in the month of February. I think there was a little bit of a lull in terms of, okay, we've done this before, when's March coming? Uh, and I think that adversity helped. We went through some injuries. Uh, and I told our guys, I don't think we're sitting here today without that adversity. And we didn't really experience that until the end of the year last year when we were upset in our conference tournament. So, you know, I like where this team's at. I don't think there's a coach that's going to be sitting up here that doesn't say you, like, you, know, you don't like where your team's at, especially when you're an AQ. You're an automatic qualifier. You have to be playing your best basketball or you wouldn't be here. Uh, and I certainly like where our guys are at right now in terms of mentally. Uh, last question for me, I guess, just uh, with what Texas Tech is able to do on the defensive end, I guess, how do you kind of counteract that from an offensive perspective? Yeah, I told my kids, I said, you know, uh, Selection Sunday is like Christmas morning, only I didn't ask to play Texas Tech. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, they get to ask what they want their gifts to be. Uh, they're an unbelievable defensive team. And uh, it's, from a coaching standpoint, it's enjoyable to watch. Now, I'm on the other side of it, and i got to come up with a plan to be able to attack it. And not many teams have been able to do that in one of the elite conferences in the country. So, you know, we've got to have great spacing. We've got to be able to move the basketball. And at the end of the day, you've got to make some shots. So my assistants are in charge of making shots. So hopefully that will get done tomorrow. <laughs> Anything else for the head coach of Northern Kentucky? Yes, right there. John, I was just interesting what your message will be to the team. Is it kind of you're playing with house money or do you expect to win? Or what, what's, what's the mindset when you go into like this sort of 3-14 sort of matchup here? Well, you know, our mindset's always is a four-team tournament. Okay, so that's the approach we've always taken in all the times that we've been, you know, this is our third straight year playing in the postseason. So it's a four-team tournament. You know, obviously our focus is Texas Tech and, you know, our ability to play well. And uh, we'll divorce ourselves from the outcome. We'll focus on the process of what we do, and, which is every possession. And that's the only way you can do it. And it's coach speaking a lot of ways for the people that aren't inside the eye of the storm. 
But if you're going to compete at this level, then it's got to be about possession by possession. There may be a few other things I'll say that I won't share with you.